Hey gang, so I'm going to be doing a get ready with me while I answer the first three questions of my critical creative reflection. The first question is, how does my product use or challenge conventions? And how does my product represent social groups or issues? Before I answer this, um, I'm using this and I'm just gonna put that on my face before I put on any, um, any actual makeup. My final product was a film in the thriller genre and I would say that me and my partner Camila we really followed what makes a thriller movie a thriller movie with all the conventions. I'd say conventions such as the costuming, the idea as a babysitter and a baby. I would say the music we use was pretty on par with the conventions that have to do with a thriller movie. I would also say that the makeup, the lighting, I feel like we really stuck very close to the conventions. Not many were challenged in a way, but we really wanted to keep the idea of a thriller movie true to itself. I just put on this next. You can't, I, it's on my hands. You can see it, it's very shiny, but I wanted to just elaborate on some of the conventions that are seen in thriller movies. It's this sort of eerie, kind of suspenseful music that is used to kind of set the mood. And I also feel like we used the over the head lighting um, kind of specifically because we wanted it to be jarring kind of in your face and more other just conventions. Like we wanted like the babysitter trope is a very like very used convention in thriller movies so we thought that it would be a good idea to just stick with it and be true to what the genre is next i'm going to be using this it's a foundation stick and i just put it on my face just like that and then i blend it out now regarding the first question still and the social groups we wanted to again stick to the conventions and what thriller movies are kind of about and thriller movies compared to horror movies thriller movies i would say in my personal opinion they're more mystical more not going to happen but i feel like the thing that we're trying to put across is i mean looks can be deceiving i mean in our play or film it's the kid who's sending the signs not any other mystical force like it's a kid and you know that can be deceiving because some people may not believe children and we want to challenge that by i mean children should be listened to more often because in our film obviously he's seeing the future and i mean it can be hard for some people to accept but in our film that is the truth i'm just using this next but just to wrap up the final uh our first question about just the social convention to just i mean you really should trust who you believe is true even if it's a child in this case it's really it should be important that looks can be deceiving and that it's important to trust your gut in most situations question two is how would this product engage with audiences and how would it be distributed as a real media text I'm just going to add more of the concealer about under my nose. But regarding the first part of the question, I would say that this film is reaching audiences because of its <laughs> its sort of relay relatability. I feel like the two teenagers, me and Camila, that we're portraying, I feel like it's it's relatable to a certain level at least. I mean kids who are babysitting and I feel like babysitting can be scary to a certain extent because of all of the slashers out there so we kind of wanted to add our own two cents to that and I feel like with using teenagers it's just it can make the audience connect more with what they're seeing and I feel like the audience to this would be a sort of teen demographic because I feel that teens are more drawn to horror films at this sort of age. I feel like from teens to young adults, that is a sort of demographic. And I feel like 
it already being described as a thriller is already going to be very drawing to the audience. So being able to be teens and it being a sort of scary film, I feel like that is really drawing to the audience and the subject matter as well. I feel like it is interesting and it kind of gets you out of your seat and it just makes you want to know more. Next, I'm going to be using this blush stick. So my belief of how this film would be distributed if it were to be distributed in real time would be I feel like we would keep it still a short film and it would be distributed among TikTok as I feel it would reach the greatest audience there as I said before with teens and young adults I I don't know if I could see this film as a huge major full-length cinema film but I could see it as a short film that could be distributed among Instagram, TikTok, social medias, I could see it as a form of that and I feel like it would be reached the best and the best audience demographic could be reached among those platforms. I like a lot of flush so I'm just going to add a little bit of this right there. It's very bright but I'll blend it out. The third and final question that I'll be answering right now is how did my production skills develop through the making? of this project. I feel like that looks pretty good. Okay, while I'm answering this, I'm gonna be putting powder on my face so I'm not super greasy. But I would say, just to start off, that um, I didn't, I'm not very familiar with CapCut. Obviously, I've used it before in my other films for media studies, as my music video was probably the biggest one but other than that, I can't say before any of this, I was very tech savvy. And even after the music video, I was still not super advanced with making things on CapCut. I'm gonna be doing my eyebrows next with this. Um, but however, when I started this project, I really wanted to be better at CapCut because I feel like it's very helpful. Sorry, I need to keep my expression down because I'm kind of making a lot of faces, but I feel like making this project has really helped my skills because it really, it was only me and Camila, we weren't in a, we were in a group before, but now it's just the two of us. So I feel like we both really wanted this project to be the best it could be. So we were really trying to add as much as we could into the project as multiple sounds, some editing, the text, which, took a little while to figure out but we figured it out and although it may be seen as like simple skills I mean I find that they're really helpful and we really learned a lot during this production making process I just did some eyeliner off camera but I mean other than that I really feel like my production levels have gone up from at least the beginning of the year and from my music video to even my All About Me commercial to now, I feel like they've really improved. <laughs> Sorry. I feel like my production levels have really improved. I also feel like Camila and I, we didn't, we have an issue with procrastinating, I would say, but we really, really wanted this to be a good project. So we were working on it constantly throughout, even though it did take us two days because of an incident we worked around it and i feel like it really helped us make the product that we really wanted it to be i just finished the other eye off camera but i'm just going to finish it off with this i don't know if you can tell but i i lined my lips but other than that i would say that it would be it for my questions I feel like I really learned a lot during this making process and I'll really take these, the things I learned into the future with me and I really just, I'm grateful for being able to make this project with a really close friend of mine and I really enjoyed making it.